Amen and amen. Are we not grateful for our choir? Let's give God some praise for them on this morning. How they lead us so, so aptly. And I know I'm not the only one who during the week we got those songs in our heads, right? And thank goodness we do. All the other things that, that go through our minds and all the other things our minds are filled with. What a blessing that they help fill our spirits and our minds with a song. The scripture says uh, that we ought to sing to the Lord a new song. Sometimes we need God to interrupt what we already have going on. And, and sing those songs, and we're so grateful that they help us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, there is a word from the Lord today. And so if you could direct, grab your, your Bibles, there is a Bible underneath your seat. Um, if you did not bring one, there's probably a million versions on your phone, and it will also be on the screen here in front of you. We're going to be in the book of Exodus. Exodus in the third chapter. A foundational text. One of those texts that even if you never read it, you may have heard it. And prayerfully today, the Spirit will aid us in understanding it, hearing it, and, and putting it uh, to application in a different way. Exodus 3, we're simply going to be reading half of one verse. Verse 14, we'll be reading the first part of that ver verse. Exodus 3, 14a, as we call it in, in biblical studies, 14a. We're going to be reading it first in the King James Version. And then we're going to move on to the CEV, the Contemporary English Version. It's always good to read in multiple versions of Scripture, should you be really curious about a text. Because there's so many ways that us humans have sought to interpret the words of God. Exodus 3 and 14. When you have that, could you say back to me, Amen. Amen. Please attend with me to the powerful word of our God. Exodus 3 and 14. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And now in the CEV version, God said, I am the eternal God. So tell them that the Lord, whose name is I am, has sent you. This is my name forever. Back to the KJV just one more time. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. For the time that is ours to share in God's house this morning, I would like if we could think on the following idea. God is and I am. God is, and I am. Please pray with me. Oh God, how we need you in our lives. The, even just these weeks, we can just think about all the ways we have needed you, and what a blessing that we can come into your house and talk to you. God, we, we run our mouths all week. We talk, our, our minds are going constantly. Oh, it's so good to be able to talk to you. The hymn says, you walk with us and you talk with us and you tell us that we are your own. We're so glad, God, that when we talk, you listen and you speak back. You, you do it in mysterious ways, but how grateful we are. So God, in this moment where we seek to speak to you and to hear back from you, we pray that you will quiet us down enough so that we might hear that still small voice. God, I pray that you will give us all ears to hear what it is you're saying to each of us individually in the ways that you say it. And certainly, God, I pray that in spite of the frailties of the preacher, that your word will come forth with power and it will do what it needs to do in the hearts of your children, whom you love so very, very much. We love you back, God, and we are doing our best to listen to you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that together we say amen. 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 God is and I am. People of God, have you stopped lately to think about the utterly astounding fact that you are here. It really is a wonder, it's an extraordinary thing that you exist, that your feet are touching this earth, which they are, and that your heart is pumping blood, which even if you had not even thought about it today, it is. It's astounding. In order for it to happen, for you to be here in this room, in this earth, in this city, in this time and place, in order for that to, to happen, uh, many factors had to come together that maybe you haven't thought about in a while. First, there is what it took to get you here. You had to be born. That's not random. That's not easy. That's not, that's not by chance. Even just the fact that you were born is astounding. The author Mel Robbins, she, she uh, made waves when, in, in, when she said, and she had, uh, according to scientific studies, has estimated that the chances for each of us to be born as who we are is one in 400 trillion. This is based on the chances of your mother and your father meeting, 
is based on the chances that, 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 that they would stay together long enough to have children. And, and then, of course, the probability of conception, which is only about 13%, plus the chances that the 23 chromosomes from your mother would meet with the 23 from your father to give you the 46 that God needed to put together to make you, you according to her calculations, this is a chance of one in 400 trillion that you would be who you are with the hair that you have and the mind that you have and the passions that you have and that heart that you have, that you would be here now, who you are with that sense of humor and that, that knack for those things that you can do, one in 400 trillion, it's astounding that you're even here. And then there's what it took to get us here and then there's what it takes for us to even just be here every day. It's crazy. We don't even think about the magnificence of our bodies and what God has done, has woven together, has engineered simply that, so that we can live each day. Did you know, for example, that just for you to breathe, what you are doing right now without even thinking about it, it is a, it is a work of art, that breath that is coursing through your lungs. Did you know that just for you to breathe, there are three different neuronal groups that all need to coordinate Three, and they're all in different parts of your brain. They're not even next to each other. And they need to coordinate so that, so that the breath can, can, can happen the way that God designed it to. And, and one of these, these neuronal groups that does the inhale, the other one does the exhale, the other one controls the rhythm of the whole thing so that when you get excited, your breath might change, but you don't even think about it. Oh, but it's not easy. And in these neuronal groups, scientists have estimated, because this just blows my mind, they can't even count with precision because, because what God did is more amazing than what we can understand. They've estimated, though, that in each of these neuronal groups, there's about 50,000 neurons. That means 150,000 neurons have to get together and coordinate in order for you. Can you just breathe in for me and breathe out? Whoo, you have no idea what it takes for you to be here. That's like 150,000 neurons, 50,000 in each group. That's like three small cities having to get all of their citizens to work on a project together that they don't know each other. They have to agree and coordinate, and it has to go well thousands of times a day for decades. Ooh, it's amazing that you are even here. All that God did for you to be here. There's what it took to get you here, not easy. There's what it takes to, to make sure you're here every day, that your body even works so you can do the things you need to do. And then, and, and I know I'm not the only one who can testify to this. There's the fact that you're still here. Now, I have the honor, as I often say, of knowing a tiny bit of some of your stories, and, and I, don't, I don't have the honor of knowing everything that you have seen in your life, that you've lived through that tried to trip you up, knock you down, and, and turn the whole thing into a disaster. All the forces that, that came up against you, and, and I know I cannot be the only one who can say, I know it is not by chance that I am still here. I don't know all that you've been through, but, but I do know probably, I would wager, that God did a lot of work to get you through everything that you got through. That God had to do acrobatics to keep you here. That perhaps life, if, 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 if you're anything like, like most of us, life tried to break you in some places. And sometimes we can say we, we even tried to break ourselves without meaning to, but, but God didn't let it happen. You're still here. That, that, that even just the physical, the, the insanity of the things that we do and go through as when we're young, the dangers, toils, and snares. Oh, but they didn't have the last word. We're still here. Not just physically, but emotionally, psychologically, all that sought to, 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 to take our spirits and cast it down so that it might not ever rise again. All that sought to come against us and all that we have walked through and faced in this life. Uh, but God, who is a healer, God, who, who goes before us and figures things out when we don't even know which way is up. God, yes, who can prevent certain things that, that we couldn't even know were, were going to be in our path. But God went before you, before you and said, no, no, that's not going to take place. She's going to make it through that. That. He's going to make it through that. All that God had to do. Is there anyone in the chapel this morning who can say, it took a lot to make sure I'm still here? <laughs> You're here. You're here. Your feet are on this blessed earth. It's not by chance. And, and you're here now with the people that you are around. You're here. 
The enemy didn't want that. The, the chance did not want that. Uh, a random, uh, the, 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 idea, the, the, the possibility of chaos and just things falling into place, that was not what is responsible for those lungs working and for your personality to be here and for your body to do what it needs to do and for the magnificence that is you, not of any merit of your own, but because there is an author behind you who made sure you are here. Yes, it is astounding that we're where we are. Existence is a big deal. This verse that we see in, in Scripture and in, in, in the book of Exodus, this astounding and, 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 and enigmatic, mysterious for, for millennia, it's been fascinating and baffling theologians and believers alike in many different traditions, this divine declaration that we have in Exodus 3. Have you heard it before? I am that I am. This is the only time in Scripture, perhaps you, you know, that, that God names God's self. Every other time, other names, El Shaddai, etc., those are humans saying that about God. This time, God says, let me tell you something about me. This is what God says we need to know about who God is. I am. God, you may know, is speaking with Moses. And this is during the time when the Hebrew people are living under the insanity of Egypt. You may remember from our studies, especially if you were in Bible Academy, amen, you may remember that Egypt had control over the Hebrew people and, and have them in bondage for 400 years. And so the people of the, the Hebrew people, they thought that nothing could change. They thought that this force, here it is, this force of Egypt and all that Egypt did and, and what had happened, what had gone wrong and what Egypt was, was doing that was not right, was not good, they thought that that's just the way it was going to be. It was immutable. Why? Well, Egypt is really big and they have no interest in, in, in letting us go. They have no interest in letting this change or, or making things go down a different path. And Egypt is so big and mighty and it's been this way for so long. So this is just the way it is. Moses, in fact, who is the interlocutor with God right now, Moses, who is the, the human recipient of this divine revelation, Moses had run away from Egypt, we remember. Right? He said, you know, I care about this, but there's nothing that can be done. Moses had run away and, and, and kind of said, you know, I just think it's just going to stay that way. Let me go to the desert and just get through this life Whew. the best that I can, giving up on things as it were, because there didn't seem to be much that could be done. And so when God comes in to announce, I am, God is not simply giving a theological premise or, 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 or stating God's existence simply for the fact that we might intellectually know it and perhaps worship God for just existing. God is not coming in simply to say, I, I'm here and, and you should give me honor and, and you should know that, you're, that, that there's someone who, who is behind all of this and, and then go about your business. No, when God comes in in the midst of this, this, this situation that seem, seemed immutable, God is saying, I, I know that Egypt is. That Egypt exists, that it happened, and that it's not good. I know that Egypt is, is big. It's, it's powerful. It, it is a big deal. I know that Egypt has lasted a long time. I know that Egypt thinks that it is, it is significant, and it is, it is extraordinary, and that there's nothing that, that can move it. I know that Egypt is, but God comes in to say, I need you to know something that's even more important. I am. The God of the universe saying, yes, Egypt exists, but so do I. Egypt is big, but I am bigger. Egypt may have been able to create all of this and, and set up this kingdom and do a lot of harm, but I set up the whole universe, and I have done a lot of good, and I put the planets where they are. And Moses, you don't even know what a planet is. But if you knew a little bit about my character, you would know, yes, Egypt is, but I am bigger. Yes, Egypt has been around a long time, 400 years is quite a long time, but, but this is the God of the universe, period into human history and saying, yes, Egypt has been here for a while, but I have been here even longer. Yes, Egypt is, but I am. And this, this self-describing uh, existence of God, God is saying, I am not only here simply to, uh, to, to, to exist and to be, but I am an active God. Because then God goes on to say, and because I am, Egypt is not going to have the last word. Because I am, I am what can create and what can move things. And Moses, I'm up to something, and I'm going to do something. How many know that God is an active God? 
God does not sit back and let things take place. God moves. How do I know? Look at you. In your life, you think all of that could have happened just by chance or on your own merit? Absolutely not. God moves in mysterious ways. We don't always see it. God, God's, God's hand is not visible to the human eye, but God moves. And God is here declaring to Moses, Moses, I'm not going to sit back. I have heard the cries of the way things are, and I, I declare that I am here, and, and Egypt is big, and, but I am bigger, and, and I'm a liberating God, Moses, and I'm not going to leave it the way it is. Because I am, something can change. The, the New Interpreter's Bible describes this word, this word that, that God uses to say that I am. It's ayeh, asher, ayeh in the Hebrew. It's, it's a mysterious uh, uh, set of words. It's hard for us to translate. Uh, but the, the New Interpreter's Bible says that, that, that one way we could interpret this phrase is God says, I am who will make possible what is not otherwise possible. Because it's not just I am, but it contained in this, in this phrase is also the idea that, that, that I am the one who brings into being. All this that you saw around you and all this that creation, the magnificence of what you see around you, you think I'm done? You think that's all that I can do, all that I can make new, all that I can create, all that I am able to do? God is saying, no, I am. It is not past tense, it is present tense. I am active, I am here. There is power hmm, in the fact that God is. And, and the next time you, you walk into something in your life that is troubling you and that is feeling very, very big, I want you to just say, sometimes it's mo so much more simple than, than what we imagine. I want you to just say to yourself and to the situation and let it resound in your, spir in your spirit, you know what, all this is, all this is big, all this is driving me crazy, all this is terrifying me, but you know what else I know? God is. In fact, can you just say that with me right now? God is. God is. Ooh. God is bigger than all that you are going through. God still is the same God who was uh, uh, back there in front of the burning bush with Moses, still is. And, and, and even though things seem big and seem mighty, and that's, that's okay because we're human and that's going to happen, but, but we ought to know and we ought to let this refrain animate our courage in this life. God is. And here we find ourselves in the lives that we are living. Similar to how Moses ran, mm, how he ran away from the situation. Because he thought, well, this is just how it's what? Going to be. We then find ourselves in our own journeys, sometimes concluding because maybe it's lasted a long time or maybe it seems very immutable the way that it seemed back then, concluding that this is just how it's going to be. That maybe whatever happened that you didn't expect and it, it caused a, a, um, a, some, some, some tidal waves of grief to flow through your life and no one warned you about it. And that thing you can't believe took place and it was big. And you can't believe that that has been part of your journey. And so part of you says, well, I guess that's just the determining factor of my story. And now since that has taken place, that's the way my story is going to be. It is. Have you ever heard the phrase, it is what it is? Oh, we say that all the time. I'm not sure uh, that I like that phrase. It is what it is. It's so, it's so, it, it causes such dejection in the human spirit. It is what it is. Perhaps, perhaps it's, it's something that happened. Perhaps in your journey, it's something that hasn't happened. And, and, and we begin to come to this place in our lives. And, and when we look at our stories that we think, maybe my task now is to accommodate. It hasn't happened. That's just not my story. It is what it is. Perhaps, perhaps it's not something that went wrong. Perhaps it's, it's, a, it's a circumstance that you can't believe is part of your lot in life. The deck of cards that you were dealt, that one card in there that you, you just can't believe what you see when you, when you open up the deck and you see that card in your hand. Why, you may ask? Why this circumstance in my life? Why is this what is? This card, why was I dealt that? Has anybody ever wondered? These circumstances, why did they happen to me, this life? That, why, why is it this way? Ah, and then something in our spirit sometimes uh, uh, rises up to, to answer back because we, we don't know that it can be moved. We don't know that it can be changed. We don't know that we can trade that card for another one. We've been trying for a while and, and something in our spirit sometimes rises up. Have you ever heard yourself say, well, it is what it is. This is just the way our lives perhaps are going to be. This is just the hand I was dealt, the thing that happened, what was in the cards for me, what was part of my story, and that's how it is. And, and my task now is to accommodate and to understand and to accept and, and, and to live what it is now and, and understand that this just is. But, you know, we're also told in Scripture 
As we think about the power of what God declared about God's self, that God is. Yes, Egypt was. And it was big and it had lasted for, for a long time and it was mighty and, and it did a lot of things and it had a lot of impact, but, but God also was and is. We're told that in Scripture, but we're also told something else in Scripture. I don't, maybe you remember this, it's in Genesis 1 and 27. It's, it's something that, that, that informs so much of our faith. We're told that we are made in the image of God. That when God created us, God placed in us some of the character and the nature. And so, so what is true about God in some ways, some of those things are true about us. We are not the capitalized version. We are not all that God is. But, 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 but the, those things that are true about God, that are, that are wonderful about God, that are important about God, hmm, in some way, in some manner, God made them so that they are true about us as well. Did you know that you are made in the image of God? This means that our nature in some ways reflects God's nature. And so, and so people of God, it stands to reason, does it not, that if a significant part of the wonder of God's character is the fact and the immutable truth and the life-changing wonder that God is, then we ought also to recognize somewhere inside of us, you know what, that same God that is and that exists and that created all this made sure that I am. And the same God who says, I am, is, is giving us that life. And, and God is the one who made sure that we are here now. It is God who made sure that, that those 23 chromosomes came together with the other 23 to make sure that we could be who we are. It is God who wove together my lungs and my brain and all of that so that I could breathe when I needed to and exist as I needed to. And it is certainly God who has made sure that through all that I have gone through, uh, nothing was able to knock me completely down. And when I stumbled, God picked me up. I couldn't have done it on my own. God gave me that existence. God gave me this life. And we who belong to the God who says, I am, we too ought to say, and you know what? In this journey, I also have to declare, I am. You are here. Nothing can take away the fact that no matter what has happened to you, and I know some things go so very wrong and you can't believe it, but you are here. There is power in you. There is agency in you. If, if, as long as you can say, I am, you can still say there is possibility. As long as you can still say, I am here, you can still, still say there might be something else tomorrow that I haven't seen yet. As long as you can still say, I am here, you can still say, I can still live this life. And yes, circumstances may have done one thing and life may have done something else to me. And yes, it is what it is, but I am too. And I just need a few people. This is how we ought to approach those things that we face in our journeys. In the same way that God declares I am, we can say, yes, and because God is, I am. And I'm not gonna, 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 gonna sit back and, and run away and, and act like nothing can change. Well, I must be here for a reason. Why would God go through all of that to weave you together? to protect you from all you've been protected from, to make sure that everything in you works the way that it does. Why? If there were no reason, and we ought to approach these journeys, there ought to be something that rises up in us to say, you know what? God is, and God made sure that I am. There is power in recognizing that, like God, we are. The fact that you are here means that your life is not fixed or determined. As long as you can say, I am, you can say, well, there's possibility for what else could be. I just want to talk to you about a few things, and then I'll let you go. A few things that, 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 that this gift of God, this life, this existence gives us, and that makes it so that you can live and can create possibility in the same way that God could create possibility out of a situation that, that seemed immutable. I know you may have some things like that in your life. And I just want to talk to you about a few things that God gave you when God gave you that, exist of, that gift of existence and that you still have that can make tomorrow different. Your life is not fixed or determined. Your journey, our world is not fixed or determined. There, there might be a reason you are here now. How, how is it that, that, that God would, 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 would send us into these lives, these relationships, this nation? There's a reason you are here now. God gave us a few things. God gave you a few things. First, you have your intention. Maybe you want to write this down, especially if you know what that's like sometimes to feel like, mm, I don't, these circumstances, these things that happen, maybe there's nothing I can do. God says you are. God gave you your intention, what you can will, 
what you can look out onto, onto the world and say, I don't think that should be. I think this should be. God, God didn't give that randomly. That, God gave you that for a reason because you have a heart and a soul and, 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 and compassion. And so you know some things that should be. And God said, I'm going to give that one my, that, that, that intention to see how things could be and, and to shift them. In your own life, you have that intention, that power to have a will and, and to say, you know what? I think that this could be different and I'm going to move according to my intention. So often in life, we have intentions. We start at the beginning of the year, anybody? With some intentions. Oh, we have a long list. Mm, mm, mm. They're numbered. We have a vision board to go along with it. We have some intentions. But our actions don't always align with our intentions. And sometimes we have conflicting intentions and we haven't sat down and thought about which ones are really truly my intentions. God gave you that power and you are, you're still here. So you have the power to say, what do I intend? I cannot control, but I have power. There's a difference between control and power. You know, some people, they think power is control. They wanna be powerful, they try to control everything. Oh no, we can't control our lives. But if anybody has power in our lives, it's you. You have your intention. You have your voice. You know how we were talking about being made in the image of God. There's the power of the voice of God, which helps us so much. God also gave you a voice to say what needs to be said. The little things, when you're walking down the street and you can say a kind word, and the big things that maybe in your family, for example, have been needed to be said for generations. God gave you a voice a relationship that's breaking our heart. What can you say? How can you use your voice to create what God wants to be on this earth, what you want to be in that relationship? We have a voice. You still are here. You're here. Why would God make it so that your vocal cords can produce all this sound if you weren't supposed to use your voice? You have your intention. You have your voice. You have your determination. Do we have any determined people in here, some stubborn people? Maybe the spouses can point to the one next to them. Some stubborn people because often we don't tell in ourselves. You have that determination. Let's change the word. If you have a stubborn spirit, say, God, give me, take this stubborn spirit and mold it to your will and make it determination. You have that. The enemy wants to say, no, no, let go of that and, and don't use it. But God said, you're here. Are you determined about anything? Are you determined that your life will make this place better? Because so often we are tempted, I believe by the enemy, tempted into despair. That's easy. Oh, but, but the other side of despair, despair is when we say nothing can be done and this is how it's going to be. And, and it's a very bad feeling. Despair is, is one of the, 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 the lowest feelings that a human spirit can feel. This is just how it's going to be. The other side of despair is determination. Oh, that's not how it should be. And so I am determined. I cannot change everything. I cannot force any outcome, but I know I'm going to do what I can do. And I know I'm not going to sit back and let this be. I know I'm going to do all that I can do because why? I am here. You have your intention. You have your voice. You have your determination and people of God. You have your belief. You have your belief. This is why Jesus was always talking about belief. It is your faith, hallelujah, that will heal you. You have the, the power to say, I'm here, and for this time that I, hear, uh, that I am here, I know I'm going to believe that there is a God on the throne, and that God does not give up. That God does not give up on our world. That God does not give up on my life. I have a choice to believe. What do you believe as you walk out of here today? What do you believe with this life that you have, this miraculous gift of existence? That means that your feet are touching the earth. You are in that family you are in this life. You are living your story. You are in that place of work. You are in this community. You are in this world. What do you believe? These are the things that God has given us because people of God, the truth of the matter is, it is significant that you are here, that you exist. In the same way that the great God of the universe declared about God's self so long ago, I am, and things will be different because I am. And, 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 and as we see, we look back, and Egypt wasn't able to keep doing all the craziness that it was doing. God is. God was, and God moved. And because God is, something changed. That great God of the universe has also given you the gift of life that you ought also to declare into the lives that, 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 that you are living. I am. 
God has given you an existence that you could not create on your own. It was not easy to do. It is not easy to keep you here. It requires intention and engineering and magnificence and the power of the Most High God. The great I am has made it such that you are. What are you going to do with it? Amen? Amen. Amen.